surprise, it's a Wednesday release, and that means we have something extra special for you guys. Grindr Plumico is still here, and we're working on the Porsche hunting cart body. Now, in this video, we're making the flares for the cart, and that's going to involve a lot of metal shaping, so stick around, put your feet up, this is going to be a pretty rad one. Tapered in, I mean, tapered in might look better. It would look really good tapered. Like, yeah. I think so too. Um, that uh, looks pretty good, like just that kind of, okay. that level. Can you do me a favor and ink all mark just like where that kink's gonna be? So yeah, the trick with the pick shrinker is to be as consistent as possible. So like same same, same, same pressure, pressure same, yeah, yeah, same pressure, same spacing. Because then if you're consistent, the whole, if, especially if it's a consistent radius, but then you can kind of undo it easily too if you know. Right. Now I did I try to be consistent there. I could have done better. Yeah, that's so cool. Just bend a 90 degree flange and then shrink yeah, it. Yeah, bend it. Just turns into a nice arc. Yep. That's awesome. Look at that. And we got a radius. Wow. Fender. I barely know her. No. So what I want to what I want to do here is shrink so this can tip over inside. Right now I'm gonna use this line as my guide basically for the center of it. I don't want to go see too far in, and then we might bubble up the center. Then we'll see. Yeah. What looks after. But let's see. I'm gonna overlap passes so that it kind of blends the wheel markings so there's only that much contact passes such a big wheel. Right. Um, and not only like width-wise, but also length-wise. So like, basically I can break this up into like, yeah, like four, oh, four segments, like quadrants basically. Literally quadrants, <laughs> yeah. four of them. We're, just gonna, we're gonna ignore that line here because this is the, whatever. Yeah. You would want a wheel between one and two, then wheel from two to three, and then from three to four, which means that means these two will get the most wheeling. So mm -hmm. you might have to like do a little extra to land, but it blends your passes so you see them less. Gotcha. And with like aluminum, it's kind of important because it's so soft. Um, let's pick a radius that we want this to curve. Now, if you were trying to make this absolutely perfect, I would actually go through and use a, a like softer radius and I work my way up. Mm, but, doing it a couple stages. Yeah, but, it would take a lot longer and well, it's aluminum, so. So it's, you don't have to do that as much? Correct. Yeah. One thing you can do if you fall out without having to do it that. <laughs> that makes sense. Use the momentum of the wheel. It's very easy to fall off the back of the panel. Right. And that's another thing too. So when you're metal shaping and you're using the English wheel, you want you do something called framing the panel like I did earlier, you make the frame. Yeah. If you wheel outside that frame, you actually lose the tension of the panel. You actually it'll like flatten itself back out. Again, this is kind of let's let it like just float. <laughs> Not letting it rebound so much that it kinks it. Those are awesome. They're, they're 70 okay. millimeters. Okay. And uh, now measure the same side. Oh, yeah, right. 70, yeah. yeah right there. Right there. Okay. Ready? Yep. Everybody stare deeply into the arc. Yeah. Nice mohawk. Thank you. <laughs> really. 
punk's not dead or something like that. <laughs> it's, like, it's a mullet hawk. A mullet hawk. <laughs> comfortable as Ethan's setup, but I mean, this is actually very premium. Oh. I mean, we don't, we, we, it's about the same length as this one. I, it's about almost like that. It's basically like this, just but this it's paper is yeah. longer, essentially. Yeah. So we'll just do that. Let's go, to, let's go to the end. Go to the end. Like adults. Yeah, and just kinda. Well, here, if we, if we go this way, then we can just line it into the corner. <laughs> Ethan's like, do you mind? <laughs> Try to work over here. What? It's your baby now. Oh gosh. Remember what we did? Yeah. Measuring the float levels. Is there a whole bunch of gunk in these carburetors, or? Uh, th yeah, the this one had a whole bunch of gunk down in the float bowls. This one Ryan had cleaned out earlier, so the float bowl looks pretty good. And there's a like, couple little floaties in there, and I'm just gonna take a couple of more things apart and really clean out the idle circuit. So. What you're saying is this thing should run mint once it's all put back together. Hopefully. I didn't totally take them apart because we definitely identified the idle circuit as being the major problem. So I'm kind of just focused on that so that we can keep this rolling. Nice. Yep. Then, yeah. Look at the gap in the front of the rear. Like, and it's a little more gap yep. in the rear as yep. it should be. Yep, 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 yep. Entire body for a cart in a week and building it also and learning it. I mean, and learning it, and, yeah, and yeah, teaching and, learning, and, and, teaching teaching it, it. and also fixing the carburetors and running another business at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah, it's uh, a challenge. And I've said it a million times already, I am thoroughly impressed with what you guys are doing so far. Oh, thank you. We are ahead of schedule, awesome. And we went to the arcade yesterday. Next week on Crucible Coachworks. Tune in as we finish the hunting cart body and take it for a spin. Now will we check ourselves before we wreck ourselves? I don't know. Turn on those post notifications and you'll find out next week. <laughs>